Hi, I'm Dave and welcome back to Brentech IT Tech Support. Today we've got a sponsored video from Locked. They're a Netherlands based company and they're wanting us to promote their UK Amazon release of their Touch Smart Lock in July 2023. So Locked has given us this parcel which should have their beautiful smart lock inside with its bridge and eight AA batteries. Uh, which should be lasting for about 6 to 12 months. That's really good and it's all included with the standard lock or the black edition lock. So let's open up what the parcel that they've sent us and see what we've got. I've been really, really excited with this one. Okay, we've got a covering letter so I'll have a quick little read of that. Oh, they've also sent us the power kit, uh, which is an optional extra. And the reason why they've sent the power kit is because at the moment they've only got the EU plugs on the bridge adapter. And so they've sent us a UK power adapter and because of production schedules and things, that's still going to be an issue for when it's released early on. And so if you get them quick on Amazon, uh, you'll get a 10% discount, which they said the price should be an introductory offer of £299, which will be 10% off, so £269, and the power kit is normally sold for £39. So that's a good discount to get as an apology for not having UK plugs on them, and they'll also provide a UK adapter and a free power kit as well for the inconvenience. I think that's very generous because just the adapter allows you to use it without any problem. So that's very, very good of them. So yeah. If you want, after you've seen this video and you go, yeah, I want one as well, get one quick whilst the offers are on. That's what to do. Oh, I think we've got some cookies. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. After the um, finished unboxing video, before I do the install, I'll have some coffee and biscuits. Thanks very much. We have here. This is probably the adapters. Yep. We've got the UK adapters, so we can use that straight away. This looks like this is the power pack or the power kit. Yep, we've got the power kit as well. And a very gorgeous black edition lock. So let's get that out of the way. And the black edition lock, which is stunningly beautiful. So we'll get on with the unboxing after I laid this out and made it all neat for you guys. Before we get on with the unboxing and setup of the lock, smart lock, I just want to talk about the features that it has because it's absolutely packed full of features that we've been looking for. First of all, it's open with a touch, any touch. The lock communicates to your smartphone via Bluetooth when you're within three meters range. It's the highest three-star SKG security certificate. It's got 260-bit encryption, which is what's used by banks. There's completely no keyway at all, so you can't pick the lock. Uh, there's no, literally no key to go in. It's all digital, which is brilliant. It works with a multitude of smart assistants, such as Google, Alexa, Home Assistant, and a whole load more. You can add up to 200 reusable digital keys, all of which can have an optional extra pin. Guest links make it even more convenient than an access code, where guests can open your door without even installing the locked app. So that's brilliant and simple. Code access works by just simply pressing the two buttons on the front of the lock, and the codes can be up to 10 digits long with security lockout so you can't just keep typing in codes. If you do, the lock times out for a while and if you keep trying, it times out even longer. They've really thought of security. You've got an open house mode, which is kind of the exact opposite of all the security. It allows the house to be unlocked automatically by anyone. So if you've got a party or you're doing an open showing because you're selling the property, uh, you don't need to keep going to the door to let people in. Even if someone locks a door, it will automatically unlock for the next person. So that's a nice, simple feature to have. It also set your mind so that you've got it set for four hours. So it doesn't stay that way. It does notify you, hang on, you know, your door's unlocked. 
the locked bridge, which is included with the lock, both the black edition and the standard chrome edition, uh, allows it to connect to your home Wi-Fi, so you can then access it remotely. But the lock will work without the bridge, it just doesn't have all the features. So it's great that they do include the bridge because some companies don't. You can easily lock the door from the inside with just a simple turn of the knob and the motors do the rest. Brilliant. The touch to open feature knows when you're near the area, so it will actually present on the screen, touch to open, and the door unlocks and you can open it easily. The locked lock knows which side of the door you're on, so it won't unlock if you're inside. That's a really clever feature, and that's done with two Bluetooth antennas. For security reasons, if the door is at all unsure if you're inside or outside, it won't automatically unlock. And when you're leaving, you just pull the door closed, and then the lock will present touch to lock, and then you just touch it, and all the motors will activate and lock the door for you. Lovely. Really looking forward to that. Also, you can lock it remotely and unlock it remotely as well, as long as you've got that bridge active. So let's get on and have a look what's in the box. That comes beautifully packaged. Open it up. Gorgeous black finish to it. There is a chrome diversion as well. The only difference between the two is the color. It will just open this one up. Take the whole package out. You've got your instructions at the bottom. And it's just a very quick start guide. Wow. It's all in a blister type pack packaging, so it's all secure for shipping. So this is our outside component. This is the smart touch. This part goes on the inside, which is the lock with reversible handles, so you can have it either way. That's your close knob. There's actually some heft to that. That's a good bit of weight there. And you've got your port open and we'll get onto the insides. This is the connect bridge, which is why they provided us with the continental adapters. So we can just do that and then use that in the UK. They are retooling for this, so this will have a UK plug eventually. And should be out soon. Take off the plastic covers. A very nice, clean, elegant look to that. That's obviously, you just plug that into your mains and that's already good to go. Now this is the lock activator. Now this is what will go in where your key used to be and as that turns that will drive the door mechanism to retract all the deadbolts, locks and everything else in your multi-point lock system or a other lock. There are many many doors it's compatible with. I'll put, put on the screen a link to where to go and a link in the description as well. They provided the eight standard um, alkaline batteries but in the power kit you'll get rechargeable batteries so that's absolutely great. You've got everything good to go when you get the lock. Installation kit. Cute little dinky screwdriver. I assume that is an alignment guide. And some mounting plates. And that's it for what comes in this box. So I'll put this one side and open up the accessory kit for it and then we'll get on with the install which I'm really excited for. Okay let's have a look at the unboxing of the power kit. They've had everything produced for them which is very nice. Now this is a mains pad power supply again which is why we've got the additional 
UK adapter. So we can now plug that in and that plugs into the front of the lock. So you can charge the eight rechargeable batteries. These are nickel metal hydrides, so they're good quality rechargeable batteries. And that's all that's in there. Um, that box is, I assume, to stop it from moving around when it's delivered with the lock. But that's a lovely little kit there to charge your lock and keep it running, rather than having to take it apart, take the batteries out, which is what you have to do with the Yale, which we currently have. So really, really nice feature. Just plug that in overnight once every, what, six months, 12 months. That's not a problem, even if you have to run an extension to get there. That's great, love it. Now they say, before you start the installation, they want you to get your phone and install, download and install the app, register your account, and then the app will be the installation guide showing you how to do all the setup. So we'll get on now and install the app. We've got the quick start guide and it's very, very quick start. It's three steps. One, download the app. Two, create the account. Three, install the lock. So obviously all the instructions are within the app. So what we'll do is we'll quickly get the app and show you the setup of that. Locked app. You can see their logo, so we'll install that one. Just click open. Okay, so we have read the privacy agreement. We need to create an account. So we'll enter some details. Click create account. Now we need to check our email. So they send you a verification email and you just click here to verify that your email exists. You've done that, so you can come back to your app and go to login. Now we can put in our details and click login. So we need to do the two factor authentication. So again, we need to go back to the emails. Remember the code. And then click verify. You now have a password token. Now you're gonna need that for some of the home automations possibly, uh, probably with Home Assistant and ones like that. So best to put it in a safe place. Wouldn't necessarily say you keep it in your emails because um, emails aren't necessarily so secure, but I'm gonna email it to myself because that would be a heck of a lot easier. Note that your password is not stored on the locked servers. It is therefore not possible to regain access to your account if you lose your password and recovery token. So you must keep these details safe. They don't store them. Next. Yes, we want it to allow to run in the background. That way it knows where we are. We want it all the time, not just in the background, so that the app knows what we're doing, where we are, and that way it can do the, when you approach your house, get ready to unlock. Let's come to here. Set up a new account. Have you installed lock on your door yet? No. So now it's gonna take us through the setup process. And they've got a YouTube install video, so you can watch that one or you could watch mine. Mine will go through every single step. But we will start going through here. Yeah, this is just a very quick video. How long is it? Minute and a half video. So we'll just go next. So if you have any questions, you can contact their support team. Next. Okay, so here we have a layout of all of the parts that we'll need, and they're showing taking this part open so you can get to the insides. No. Okay, so yeah, let's get on and install. So I'll move you guys to our door. 
Well, thank you, Locked, for sending us the not cookies, but actually waffles. They were like a waffle sandwich. They were gorgeous. Really appreciated that with our coffee before we got on with the install. So we're gonna do that now, but there's one thing that hasn't come with the lock, and for 99.9% .9 of people, that's absolutely fine. But because we've already got a Yale Connect smart lock, we've got a problem where we don't have a suitable front that we can use, because it doesn't come with the front part of the door handle, it's just the insides and the touch button. So luckily I've kept all my old parts from old lock, so I can put the old lock front back on. But I'm actually gonna use the old front inside, because that would look even neater. So you can actually customize the look and feel of your lock on the front side of your door from what you get. So that's actually quite nice because it saves on materials, saves on recycling, it allows you to get reuse, it cuts down new materials, manufacturing. So it's good that they've done that. It's just that now a particular use case, we need to use our old, old lock. So I'll get that back out of the box and get that ready because you've got to do the front of the door first. Now when doing the install, make sure you've got another way into the house because if anything goes wrong with the installation, you could find you, see, you lock yourself out. So make sure you've got the back door open or a side door open um, so you can get back in just in case and or make sure you've got someone on the inside so they can let you back in if something does go wrong. But I'll get start taking the lock apart and installing it now. Okay, so I've got my old door handle from our original normal keyed lock and I'm gonna replace the smart lock front from the Yale Connect to the original door handle and then use the lock lock inside to place this part. So we'll start undoing that and getting that ready now to install. So first of all, what we need to do is take the battery section off on this one. Of course, your door handle will definitely be different. We'll move our batteries. Now we move the front. We now need to remove this accurate activator unit. To get the smart light activator out, there's a small dimple just in there. Pick it up just there, which you need to knock down as it's locking it just in that place and therefore you can't rotate that anymore so it's got to be brought down and then turned around so you can pull that out the door using a normal key lock that shouldn't be a problem so hopefully that will be okay now we've got that off what we're going to do is give the door a quick clean both front and back so we can use the web browser with the install instructions that's much clearer than the instructional video that was very brief and as they promoted that, that's not great. You want to come to the instruction video. I'll put a link to that on the website below because you want to have your web browser open and the app at the same time so you can go step by step. So we've come to here and this really does take you step by step. So you go next. You need your Wi-Fi password. We know that next. Set up a few questions of your door. Next. And now this takes us through what we've got. Therefore, you know what settings you're going to do. So we've got the lift to lock type lever. So it's the rosette version. So we go to here. And ours is slightly different from this because we had a smart lock, but um, I will go for this one because this is showing you how to uninstall. The cylinder is below our lock, which is correct. So I'll go next. This is showing you how to remove it. Brilliant set of instructions. We go next. Next. And they're showing you how to take all that off. Brilliant. So again, go next. Yes, we have now successfully removed that and we're now back to this stage. 
we have no anti-tampering features that's been taken off so we can now go back installing the lock so we've now got our plate plate and put our spring loader in it and we take this bit I've unwrapped it if you want to have it smaller you can take this spacer out which is just a small spacer so it's a smaller unit which is a bit neater so we'll do that we need to take this back plate off anyway, so we'll just unscrew this quickly. And we can pull this spacer, oop, pull this bit off first. That side we need that again. Now we can pull the spacer off, keep that somewhere safe, we can have that later. But you can see it's all nicely sealed and weatherproofed, so that's really good. Take out the steel handle, pass that through. Now in your little bag, you will need to get two shorter screws, which we've got here. And then instead of replacing this that way on, you can rotate it so you've got the shorter side, thus bringing it a bit closer. So when you get your lock, you place that through there like so. And then now invert the backing plate past the wire through there like so, line up the screw holes, and then that will clamp down when you've got it in place and line it all up for you. Get your little screws, put them in. Just do them slowly and carefully at first to make sure you don't cross the threads and make sure everything is nice and square before you make it tight. And check it at the front, hold it tight, and then snug the screws up. And once you've got that up nice and tight, you can now feed this through the door, passing the cable through where the key lock or the cylinder would go. Now we get the activator, and there's a channel for that to run through. I just see it's got anti-drill pins in there to prevent people from drilling it out but run the cable through that channel and give that a slight turn so it holds it in place get our screw again put it in there and just do that up quickly okay so now we've got that in we can go next See, this is a nice step-by-step -step video. I do like this one. Now you have to remove the activator knob. Okay, our one doesn't fit out of the box, so we've got to remove these two bolts up there and one down here using the Allen key provided. So we'll come to our little pack. We'll grab the Allen key. So all we need to do is just undo these bolts now, there's not a lot of thread to them, so just a few turns should remove it from here. Just put those off to the side. Go next. Now we need to line all of this up. Have that in our lock first. Remember to rotate this part around so you get that. You've got an extra Allen key hole here. Then add, just loosen that slightly. And make sure that is nice and snug. Now we can go next. And so now we can do these up. Make sure that is all the way in. Get that up and tight, so that holds that in place. Now we get our screws. I've used a double washer set. Just do these loose for now, so you can make sure everything's nice and straight. Put the second one in, and I'll then straighten that screw up. It just holds it all in place whilst I'm 
working on it. Before it goes up tight, make sure both the front and back are nice and straight. If you want to get a spirit level to do so, you most certainly can. I'll loosen that bit up again. Just allow that to fully sit in. And then now snug that up again. That's just to make sure this part is sitting nice and flush. Double check how straight it is. And then snug it all nice and tight when you've got it straight. Again, if you want, you can get spirit level and just put it on the front and back to get it perfect. All right, we've done that. So now we can come back to the phone and go next. Well, we don't have a slot like that. But we'll just say next. Now they're saying tighten that up. Next. So now we can add the activator unit. So line that's you want to line up that nut with this head of the bolt. and bring back our screws. And then we can just screw this in. Don't do them too tight, just so you can get it all to line up, then we'll snug them up later. All right, now I've got it all lined up, we can snug those bolts nice and tight. And do a little bit of cable management. We've got a little cable run just here. So I'll pop that in there bring it around. Now there's only one way to put it in, so you're not gonna get that wrong. Tuck that under there to make sure it's out of the way. Again, there's a little cable run just to the side here. And again, just to pop that in at the top. And make that just neat out of the way. Come back to our phone, we see you've done that, go next. Turning the knob. Yep, that's good, yep. Then we can put the cables through. Next. Now we can place the batteries in. So we can go next. Go next. Between the bottom and the middle. And so we'd select between the middle and the bottom. So I'll take this cover, open this one up, and add this. This is gonna change the calibration of the lock slightly. Then we go next. Now we put the front housing on. No, we can't do that because we need to set the lock first. I'm now going to stop there because this is where you'd now need to go through the lock settings of this by pressing that and calibrating the lock. So I'll jump back to that video which I recorded earlier. So we're back into the app now and we will close the instruction video because we have seen that. We can say yes we have the lock on the door. We have the black edition so it is looking for that. Now once you've got the batteries and this is all assembled we have to see the white light is on here, and then we've got to press this power button. So, and there, in fact, their instructions are showing the motor mounted up the way I've got it. Remove the black plastic cover. Well, you'd have to have done that to wire it in. Press and hold the black button until the light starts flashing. Then wait 10 seconds. So you push this tiny little button in just above the power socket. Right, it is now flashing. Wait 10 seconds, one. Well, I'll say next. So it shows us our MAC address of the lock. So this is obviously doing it via Bluetooth. And 
it's using Ash phone's GPS. That looks absolutely spot on where we are, so I'll click next. I really want to put the alkalines in at the, the start, um, the rechargeable start off. We'll go through the swapping of it video as a separate video. So I'll say alkaline not rechargeable. If you buy it, buy it with the power pack. Get the rechargeable batteries, have it so you can charge it up. That would be a much, much better way of doing this. Go to the outside to answer the next question. Okay, I'm outside. Now this could get fun. It's the mover lever, we know that. Do you move your door handle upwards to lock the door? Yes, we do. Do you need to turn a key while the... No, I don't need to turn the key when it's up. How far do you need to turn your knob on the inside of the door? So I'll say just a bit, 90 degrees, right. Choose the direction of the turn from the knob on the lock to the door as viewed from the inside, counterclockwise. Please pick a name for your first key. That would be created for your cue lock. Okay. Next. Create an access code that allows you to open the door without a phone. Note that the SKG certificate is no longer valid when you enable a code access. The physical security of your lock is unaffected. So I'll click next. And I'll choose a pin number. Okay, we now need to start calibration. Start calibration. Now we need to go plug in the bridge. Just about there is where you get your LED light showing that it's what the status is. But just down there is the reset switch and just get a biro or something and just hold it down and that will reset this. Then you click next, reselect that. Finish calibrating. We're gonna select our 2G network as we know that's going to be more reliable than a 5G network. Now we put in our Wi-Fi code. Has been successfully installed. Finish. Okay, you can now open your door with your passcode. So they're telling us how to do that. I assume this is the point I need to start removing the codes. About the 500 meters away, prevent the app, prevent the app from sleeping. So they want you to do that first of all. So let's come to the power settings. Battery optimization. Do not optimize. So that will now stay on. I have disabled that. There's a software update. So ah, we need to do update perhaps first of all. The lock is downloading software update. Once the download is complete, you can continue the install. It may take up to an hour before it downloads. You may have to be patient. If I have to wait for that to update, I will skip this bit, I think. So now we put that on. We can then put the case on. That is a neater fit. Okay. Ne now, now it's the black ring. Next. And now we're talking about setting up the bridge and we are good to go. Okay. Now I'm gonna put the handle on. And get your allen key and the grub screw. Motion detected at the front door. And you can now slide that in there, hold that in tight, and that should now go in that bit deeper. 
Okay, so we've got the lock now set up and we want to just double check some of our lock settings. So we'll come to my lock. I've enabled twist assist, which means just move that slightly and it will either fully lock or fully disengage the lock. Auto lock, now that's still in development, so it is a bit temperamental, but the idea is that if you push the door to, it will start try to lock it. Other doors will work fine, but because we've got a lift to lock system, that doesn't engage. So what you've got to do, but if you push it close quickly and lock it, it locks straight away. Now a twist assist, that's unlocked it, and that works that way. Now, if you don't move it in time, it will just try and fail, but don't worry about it. You can just twist it, tell it to open. And that opens the door. Do it again, and you're golden. If you're on the outside, you just press the uh, lock button and it will do that. So you can have the tuck to connect, that's outside. We'll go outside and show that later. And we can add a new key here. So just click add. We're just going to call one test. And you can choose what settings you have on that. So you can say open with a code and you'd give it a code 111111. Simple code. Obviously, choose one more complicated than that and just go next. Are you sure you want to add the key? You say add and you've got your key done. So this is really simple and that's how you do that. So I will just delete that key because we definitely don't want 111. And I'll go outside and show you operating from there. Okay, so now when you pull the door to, it will attempt to lock from the outside. Now because I didn't lift this quick enough, it didn't engage the locking mechanism. If I lift it now, and I just press and hold, it will retry, and now it's locked. Now to unlock it, just tap. It's gonna to talk to my phone in my pocket. It's gonna unlock nice and easy. And I'm out. Now if I do it quick enough, It's all nice and locked. You're nice and secure. You still need to lift to lock the lift to lock door. It's a shame that wasn't automated as well. Um, but I guess even that motor with all those batteries hasn't got enough to pull the door quite to. Entry code is nice and easy to unlock the door. You can see that it's locked. We just press and hold and it's going to want to check our code. So I'll type my code in. It verifies it. And you open and get in. So if you leave and you forget your phone or your phone battery dies, you can still get in nice and easily. And to lock it, you just push and hold. And it'll go through the locking process as well. Very simple. Nice and done. Uh, if the batteries at all die in the lock on the inside of the door whilst you are outside, using these two little prongs, you can get a nine volt battery press and hold the 9 volt battery up there and that will give enough energy to the locking system just to open the door so you can get in. And once you've got in, obviously, if you've got the power kit, you can put it on charge. And if you haven't got the power kit, obviously you can put in some new batteries. But nice and simple and good job they thought of that. First of all, what we need to do is get our mobile phone. Obviously the lock is now set up. And we can see here that we have our my key. I'll hopefully I'll have it up on the side there or there and we can touch to open the lock and we can hear that activate and run and we can lock it remotely and say yes we can have a look at all of our keys and so we can see what our key users are and we can see what our key settings are. Now the touch to open and auto unlock features are extra functions that work. Now the touch to open 
works when you have left a 500 meter radius and then approach within that radius, it will stay awake for 20 minutes waiting for the reactivation from your phone and then when you touch it, it will unlock. The auto unlock is when you approach your door from that 500 meter radius, when the lock notices your phone coming close to it, it will automatically unlock. And that does work really well, but it can also unlock by mistake when you're still inside the house. So we will need to turn that off if you have that problem. Now it is still in beta, so they are working on that and they are developing fixes. And also there will be a um, calibrate your lock to your specific environment because our house overlaps our door slightly. So when we're inside, we can be in front of the front door. So that's why we're getting that issue. We can then have our account and we can manage our account in there and come back and we can go to the app settings and that's just some of your notifications. I've turned all the notifications off because I was getting so many from doing the tests, but you can actually see all the different options which are really good. I'll turn those off for now. So if we then come to the My Lock settings, here we can see what the battery is and we can see that it's 100% charged and we've got that plugged in charging at the moment. Got the Wi-Fi connection, that's to the bridge and that's saying that's perfect. Now the Bluetooth, the reason why that's saying it's quite low is we've actually got our Bluetooth sensor at the other end of the house from where our front door is going through multiple walls. So that's actually doing really, really well. Um, I've just put it completely out of the way. It's not visible, no line of sight to the door. So having a 20% connection to it is really, really good. The twist to assist, uh, that's a lovely little feature. You just give the knob a little turn and then it will see that you've turned it and it will finish doing the multiple turns for you. A little bit less effort on your part, but that's a really nice feature that the lock has. It does it for both locking and unlocking the door. The auto unlock, again, that's when you walk up to the door, it will see that you've approached after you've left the area and it will then unlock. So when you walk up to the door, just pull down the handle, push it open. That worked really well for me when I first tried it, but I've turned it off again because of the way our doors are situated. Um, our garage also goes past the door. So when I was going to the end of the garage to get a tool, I could hear the lock unlocked, which yeah, again, we just need to just tweak that because I've got my tools right next to the wall in front of the door inside the garage. My unique use case, uh, but again, they are doing this in beta test at the moment and they do warn you about this. And so they just say, if you do have an issue, turn it off. They are going to be releasing that software to do the calibration. And once that's done, this will be really, really amazing. Um, again, touch connect, again, um, that's determining if you're inside or outside of the door. And so that was too, um, too sensitive for us. But again, that was really great. Uh, when I was outside testing it, you touch the lock, it wakes up the lock, it connects to your phone and it unlocks. It works really, really well. It just works too well for us at the moment. And again, it is still in beta, but when they've got that um, tightened up a bit more, oh, I'm gonna really enjoy that feature. Uh, you can have a schedule here and you can lock. So you've got it so it automatically tries to lock the door every night. Now I would like them to actually add a, if left unlocked for a certain length of time, try to relock the door. That could be nice. So I'll be contacting them and putting that directly to them because they do want some feedback on these. Um, open hours. Now this is if you want to have a time schedule for the lock to automatically unlock and let people straight in. So if you're gonna have a party, an open house, if it's a shop front perhaps, this could be really useful. Um, I haven't seen that on any other locks, but that is a wonderful feature to have. And then we've got the calibration of lock and it will just allow you to recalibrate it if there has been a change or if you found it's just been not quite functioning right or you've taken it apart and reattached it so you can recalibrate it. The lock location, that's obviously for where you are and then that is how it works out that 500 meters range. Again, I'd like to maybe adjust that 500 meter range because um, I'd like it to think I've left the area at a closer distance. I'd like to make that a bit tighter. Again, me passing that feedback onto them, but for most people, that would be really good. That's, uh, when we do go to the shops and come back, that has been perfect. 
um, set up a new bridge. Again, if you get a new uh, Bluetooth bridge, you just run through this and reconnect it. But I can't imagine you'll be getting a second one, but if something goes wrong, if, it, if you damage it somehow, um, you can replace it. Cancel the setup. Back to the locks. Battery and charging. Now here we can see that I've um, changed it from the alkaline batteries that came free with the lock, that came full with the, the full eight batteries, but because we've now put the power kit in, which comes with eight rechargeable batteries, comes with the nickel metal hard drive batteries, so we've set it to that. It will come back. And then you can check to see if there are any software updates. Uh, when I first turned it on, it did say that it found something it was trying. Now whether or not it did an update or not, I couldn't quite see because I didn't get a chance to check the version numbers but they are doing updates for it. So it is worth coming back and having a check in a while. That's it, really nice and simple. So that's really packed full of features. It's a lovely, lovely lock, really well made. Very glad we got this. And um, looking forward to um, doing more with it. We'll do a Home Assistant video for it as well and showing the integrations that we can get there. Again, that's still in beta testing. We're going to try and get our hands on the hacks file for Home Assistant and do an install and test for them on that. That'll be a separate video because we're just trying to keep this one as short as possible. But wonderful, wonderful lock, and it's been it's been brilliant, Re really, absolutely brilliant. A few little niggles for, for us, but that's because we've gone from a standard lock to a smart lock, then from a smart lock to another smart lock. So the instructions weren't specifically for our use case. For most people, like 90% of people, the instructions will be absolutely fine. Um, but obviously, if you've already changed things yourself, you'd be used to changing the locks. So you'd hopefully remember what you've done before and you'd be able to undo it. So yeah, that's it. Wow, they really have thought of everything to include within this lock. They've obviously got a great set of um, staff there working at their development team. I'm really, really excited for this one. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my old smart lock, but this answers all the questions and problems or niggles I've had with the AL Connect. So this isn't just a competitor for the AL Connect smart lock. This supersedes it so much. The AL, you had to buy the bridge separately, the um, access module separately. Everything that you need comes in here. The expansion pack is just to give you the rechargeable feature of the door lock without taking it apart. They've thought that through. They've really done a good job. I'm so, so excited about this one. Well, there we have the full setup installed of the locked lock. It's a lovely, lovely smart lock that we've got here. Um, we've just done a very quick install and setup. We've only been using it for a few days. Um, so do please ask us down in the comments how we're getting along. We'll try and do a review uh, six months down the line uh, when you've had more time with the lock. But the ideas behind it are absolutely wonderful. Um, but when I took the little dog for walkies and came back home, um, the door unlocked as I was crossing the road and I could just pull down the handle and walk straight in. That was a wonderful, wonderful sense and that was a brilliant feature. I'm gonna love it. It certainly is a well-made lock. Um, it's nice and strong and rugged. Uh, when you use their step-by-step -step tutorial, installation is absolutely a breeze. Um, so yeah, it's lovely. Um, really glad we got it. I'll be happy to answer any questions about the lock and if you do have any. And we will see you all again soon. Well, that's it all for now. Do hope you enjoyed the video. If so, do give a good thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification icon. Also, we've got all our social medias, our Twitters and Facebooks down the side. We also have um, a super thanks down below and a patron down below and PayPal donate button as well if you want to help us out if you're really enjoying these videos and finding them helpful. We are expanding all the time and buying new equipment and slowly increasing our quality of production. Hopefully that's all being noticed and uh, it's making a difference for you guys. Well, take care. See you all again soon. Bye for now.